G'day. Well, McLaren has stolen the thunder of every F1 team by releasing their new livery yesterday afternoon UK time. First I heard about it was uh, this morning when I woke up here in Perth uh, and I looked at my email and there was one from 1am from McLaren saying, here is our new livery. I'm thinking, did I miss an advice about a launch? No, it was just out of the blue. For a start, it is dramatically different from last year's car. The obvious difference is the blue has disappeared completely from the car. It's now just papaya and anthracite. What is anthracite? Well, it's uh, nearly black. It's a very dark gray. You'll notice too that the numbers on the car are now shiny chrome or silver. They are not the black from last year. In the right light, it's going to look fantastic. But as you can see in this shot, you can't see all of the number because of the reflection. Now this will be an issue in bright sun at some angles out on track. Is it a deal breaker? No. And with the blue from the car gone, you can expect that when they release the race suit designs, the blue here will change to silver or white. For me, this new livery is very simple. Uh, it goes back to just your two basic colors plus all the text is in white or black, with the one exception being DeWalt down here, which is in a yellow. And the only other colours featured on the car are the chrome logo and a little bit of colour next to DP World. If you go back to the special Monaco livery from 2023, you can see that they've taken in the new car this section here at the back. But the whole car looks very similar to the livery we had in Singapore, which they called the Stealth livery. I think it would look better without those chrome logos. Uh, I think the colour that is thrown in there is very impactful for the sponsor, but for consistency, I'd like to see it without that. But when you consider that Google, the people behind Chrome and Android, are paying, I'm guessing, tens of millions of dollars or pounds or euros, there's probably not much chance of getting them to acquiesce on that demand or request. The feedback I've seen so far on social media is very positive about getting rid of the blue, although I quite like the blue. Maybe I'm in the minority. Having a close look at the car, I've picked up some differences from last year's cars in terms of sponsors. We no longer have cadence from above the driver's head. That's now moved to the rear of the car. But then of course, sponsors don't always stay the same for the whole year. Some sponsorship deals are only for certain countries. So if you have a look at say Mexico last year, on the side of the McLaren, you had OXO in place of Velo. Velo is a British American tobacco brand, it's nicotine pouches, and in some countries they cannot promote that. So the OXO logo took that place. OXO is a 21,000 strong chain of convenience stores and gas stations in Mexico. And at the Dutch Grand Prix, Velo changed their Velo logo to love and put fans' names subtly inside the letters. Now my guess is that half the people watching would have had no idea that that Velo had changed to love. It was a bit like Benson and Hedges when they were advertising on cars and the tobacco ban came in in some countries. They changed that logo at the back to Buzzing Hornets. And of course you had Marlboro change their logo to this one to get around that. And also on the front nose, you'll see Estrella Galizia, a Spanish beer. They were a previous sponsor in 2019 and 2020 when Carlos Sainz was at the team. Also gone on the front of the car is the number 60, which was a reference to the 60 year anniversary. You only get to celebrate 60 once and that opportunity has now passed. A Couple of you asking, where is the Monster logo? Of course, they are a new sponsor at McLaren but not yet featured on this livery. Getting back to the launch, these shots were taken at the McLaren Technology Center. And when you lighten this shot, you can see exactly where this shot was taken. In the background are 14 old F1 cars. If you go to McLaren's website, you'll see they've changed everything there to reflect the new branding. And in one of the most interesting moves I've ever seen on social media, they've gone and deleted all of their posts on their Instagram page. Go there now and all you'll see are the new images. And why have they deleted all of their past images? My gut feel is that they want their new branding to be solid. They don't want anything to dilute it. And looking back at past images of cars may do that. Having a look at some of these videos that McLaren's posted, there's a quite a dramatic one with some magnificent music, sets a beautiful tone for the new launch. But my favorite, this one. Now this is computer generated, but it's incredibly impressive. And while we're on the subject of filming cars on tracks, I can tell you that uh, there are only two filming days allowed with the new cars prior to the start of the season. I remember back in 2021, 
Richard Mill had a filming day the day prior to testing in Bahrain where they had their own signage around the track and they were provided with tyres for that testing day. It's a special type of tyre, I believe, and they're only allowed to do 100 kilometres of on-track running for those filming days, and that's split between the two drivers. How have the drivers reacted to the new livery? Well, both of them posted on their social media. Uh, Lando did three story posts at the time of recording this with a little devil on this one. And Oscar, well, he too put up three story posts plus a post on his page. But of course, the timing of this announcement is curious. Why have they gone so early? If you have a look at last year, all the releases were scheduled around February. And if you go back to last year, McLaren released their livery on February 13. This year, they've gone nearly four weeks earlier. They've stolen the march on every other F1 team. Last year, the first to release was Haas on January 31st. Uh, McLaren have now beaten them by two weeks. If you have a look at the launches for 2024, the first launch set down for February 5 is Stake F1, Kick Sauber. Crazy name, I know, and I'm not sure what we're gonna refer to it during the season, and I'm sure they would have loved to have been the first team to launch, but unfortunately that has been stolen from them. I'm often asked what are my favourite liveries to shoot, and last year I would have said to you Alpha Tauri, McLaren and Ferrari. And as it stands now, I still have them in that top three, but of course I haven't seen all of the other launches for season 2024, and I will do a video on that coming up after they've all released their liveries. But what do I rate this car out of 10? 8.2, but I'll give you a 10 out of 10 if you subscribe and like this video. Now, the only thing left after you've done that is to go and have a look at some of my other content there. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. Here's what I found. Shut up.